So um, uh, we're, we're changing a whole bunch of, uh, of classes that we have out there. Um, we're adding serialization capability for some caching and to improve performance in CodeRush. And uh, go ahead and bring up the Solution Explorer over here so you can see the classes that we're modifying here. So it's all these here, all these over here in, in, in members, types, and expressions. So you've got about 20 or so classes that we're modifying. In each one of those, we're, we're adding new methods to read and write, the, the to, to serialize. Right. Um, and we wanted to get this right. We wanted to make sure there were no mistakes. So what we ended up doing is we ended up creating a template for it. Go ahead and show them the template as it expands out here. So we created a simple template called uh, read write, and uh, and here you can see what it does. It adds a call, a registration call up here at the top. Then the, the real cool stuff here is happening later later on. And here in this call to write data and read data, if we look down in there, you can see what's going on there in those calls. So what's neat about this for each um, um, for each field that we're serializing, we're going to have a call out here that's going to be an appropriate call. Here you see we have a call to write elements. Right above it, we have a different call to write. And we're passing a different piece out there. Who is the who, who are these properties? The, the underscore primary and, and, and all of, yeah, all of these things are the fields that are declared in this class. So if we go up the top there, you can see them. There's all the fields that are there. Notice we also have something called a generic template, but because it's a weak reference type, you'll see no serialization for it at all. And so we created a template that would basically that would go through all of the fields inside of the the class and create a customized write or read call for that field. And you can see that if you go, if we go in and bring up the template uh, editor here, uh, bring up the options page, and there you can see this. Um, oh, for each, I see. Uh, yeah, so here, let's do this. Let's maximize this, drag this down a bit right here so we can maximize the area here. So here's what the main template looks like, right? We have this call here to for each, and so for each field in this, so for each field in this, we're going to call out to another template called write field. Mm -hmm. So here's write field. And right field has a number of different alternate expansions. And, and each one of these expansions is checking to see something about it. So here we're doing a call to type implements. This is called a get item type. What that's going to do is get the type of the item of the field that we're sending through in the for each, right? And we're comparing that against system enum. So if it's an enum, we'll make this call right up over here. And then we go down, uh, get down a little bit here. The next one is kind of cool. Here we're checking to see if the type is a string and if the variable matches, if it's underscore name. So if it's a string and the variable is underscore name, we're going to say we're not going to serialize it at all. The reason why is because the ancestor class has a property called name, and it's, it's going to already serialize it for us automatically. Uh, but we don't have the field there for uh, memory efficiency reasons. So the field's only in, in descendants if we're going to actually implement it. So we say not going to serialize that. And then up here, let's look at the read fields, the same kind of things going on here. Read is a little trickier because in the call to the reader, like let's click on system boolean, right? We have a call to read boolean. So we've got the call to read boolean there, right? But if we look at this, it, the, there's no equivalent in the writes because the writer can take a boolean field and knows how to write it, right? But the reader needs a specific one. So we have all these specific ones out here that we wrote. So we, we created this template in about, I don't know, it took us about maybe a half hour to kind of tweak it and get it you know, right for all the pieces that we need. And then so now let's go bring up another one and we'll just see it, see it working in the other one. There's something with ideally like a name property or something in there so we can see that name piece that we saw. So here you go. Here you can see the name field up at the top of the class. Let's go ahead and expand this uh, WR or, 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 or RW template here that we created. And there you can see there, not serializing the name field shows up, yeah, right? Cool. So pretty cool. It's kind of a neat way of showing how you can use CodeRush templates to do some automatic code generation. Um, for us, even though it took us, like I said, it took us about a half hour maybe to kind of tweak this, to kind of go through and see all the special cases and, and write something for it, um, it's still super valuable to us because we, we now take out that possibility to make a mistake as we're writing this, right? Because as you go through this, doing this by hand, um, it's, it's a little more prone to error. What if you miss a field, right? If a field's declared somewhere else, something yeah. like that. Actually, the same technique uh, can be used to generate test cases. You can generate right, uh, exactly. We're going to use the same technique. We're going to create a new template to generate test cases for us, right? So in each, thing, in, in each class, we'll create something and it'll create a special, a, a dedicated method for, 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 uh, for, for assigning values to um, the fields and then writing it out and then another method for comparing that against the, for reading it right, and then right. comparing it against the values we set. Yeah, cool. Right? 
So yeah, it's very cool. If you have this kind of thing where you have a number of fields that you want to write something special for each field, this is the kind of technique that you want to so, use. So, so is this something I can do already? Yes. In, in using Quadras? Did yes. Did slash templates for, for myself? Right. I see. Yes, you can do it already. You just got to use the for each and uh, the documentation. Let's show everybody where the documentation is for for each. Hit escape here, bring up the uh, user guide. And uh, I've already got it up, but if you didn't have this up, you'd go into the reference, click highlight reference, and then inside there, text commands, and then click on, you'd scroll down and click on for each inside of there, and you'd be able to see the documentation. There is a slight documentation uh, uh, bug here that I guess we can highlight and point out here. Uh, get item name, it, it may show up. We just fixed this, and we're in the process of fixing it. Here, let me grab the mouse, and I'll highlight it right here. So this is extra, shouldn't be there. Sometimes you, you might see empty here, but it's basically a call to get, passing an item name to get the name of the item as your, or, or get item type to get the type of the item that you're iterating through. What's nice about for each is that you can pass in, you can say things like for each method in this, for each property in this, for each class in whatever. And then I can make a call inside that for each into another template and that, then do yeah. extra. On yeah, the and then that's where you have the special code to do the yeah, other stuff. Nice. That's it.